I'm David Burke. Um, I'm sitting in the great Oriole restaurant with my dear friend, a former boss, mentor, Charlie Palmer. Nice to see you. <laughs> I like how you didn't throw old in there. That's, that was good. Thank you. Appreciate that. I guess we're going to do a little coffee talk. <laughs> just to talk about whatever, right? Talking about... What about what right, you talk? guys all go relax. We're going to just talk for a while here. You know? Do you remember how we met? We met through Waldy. Yeah, we met uh, Sunday nights at the Cremaillere. Sunday night, Cremaillere. <laughs> yeah, one of the oldies, oldie bugatties. But yeah, I mean Waldy. Uh, Waldy introduced us, and you know, now we were just talking about Waldy. I think you know he always sticks with us. Yeah. But uh, well, Waldy, I worked for Waldy at the Cremaillere, which is uh, still around. Beautiful French restaurant up in north of Greenwich, and you were at Walker right. Buck with uh, who was we and Pat Trauma. Pat Trauma was there. George Marone. Was, did Todd Higgins work there too? Uh, he came after me. Oh, he came Todd Higgins came and when I left, Todd took over there because we had known each other from uh, Code CIA. Bosque. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, he worked at the Code Bosque with me. But uh, yeah, I remember when you first came down to the River Cafe, we had all the, all the boys. I came down to New York, I was working. Uh, Mark Sarazen got me a job with Daniel. Right. And you were at the River Cafe and I got a phone call, you looking for our sous chef and uh, I started there. My second day was my birthday, and some girl <laughs> sent me a singing telegram, <laughs> like 50 balloons. And I don't think she was a stripper, but she was <laughs> singing a poem that this girl wrote about how I left her to go live in New York. And I, you know, my first day is like a, this powerful crew of like 30, you know, tough guy and cooks. <laughs> and Maron grabs me. Like, I was like, I had to be like a beat man. I was like, Maron grabs me, took me outside for a walk. And goes, oh, that was. Tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In Monroe, we had, we had a tough crew there. Well, you remember, you know, like Murphy was the most relentless guy we had. You had Murphy and Hayden. You had, uh, before that, you had Pintabona and I think yeah. Trauma. That Trauma. Yeah, we had a whole crew of guys. Yeah, Johnny Lockren and all those guys. Rick, Johnny. Little Dennis. Little Dennis, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Putting out some dinners at the. Uh, An all then American had, team. Yeah, we well, then you had. Uh, that was the guy that was eating the turtle hearts. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> well, we had the two guys from Louisiana, Manny and. Yeah, that was a little bit for me, though. Uh, yeah. You had Puzo. Yep. You had um, a couple of pastry people in there. Yeah, it was funny, the River Cafe, because people could drive there. Yeah. You know, cooks could drive there because we had a big parkland and cooks. So, so if somebody, and we were pranksters, if someone showed up late, like we, we the, the valet had your keys, so we'd get somebody's keys and we'd, yeah. we'd put like fish heads in it and wheel <laughs> wheel base of the trunk of his car. <laughs> Four days later, he's driving. Smell. <laughs> You're driving. The, yeah. like, so yeah, we we started running out of, uh, out of tricks. We one of them was the, the tile fish eyeball, like you know, this big, <laughs> and we put it in the middle of the guy's orange. <laughs> with, the glue, with, with the rocks, and you'd be like trying to get that last sip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was Murphy. That was that Murphy. Was, well, he, when you spend a little time on the submarine, you come you get some. Uh, he spent a lot of time under clever under ideas. Water. But remember, I, I always remember at the River Cafe, we had uh, we always had the issue, you know, with people coming on Saturday, especially it was always a Saturday night, it seemed like. But then you'd get these guys jumping off the bridge. That you know. missed, they missed the water. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they would stop the traffic. You know, we'd be waiting for service. Like, where is everybody? Where is everybody? And then we go out and under, out, out, outside the River Cafe. There's a little kind of landing there, like underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. And look up and say, "Jump already!" You know, let's get it over with. <laughs> with our own flesh. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they stopped the traffic. No traffic going over the bridge. And the bridge made a lot of noise back then. That's why oh, yeah. before it was paved. But the food, we had a good time. We had a, we had a, we had a good time. It was, uh, it was yeah. funny because we did when we did the thing for Jerry, we talked a little bit about uh, it being on that side of the river. Yeah. You know, and, and what, you know, all the action basically was there, was in Manhattan. You know, um, but the River Cafe got its too, That's for sure. Yeah, it's still does. You know, one of the famous restaurants. And like you were talking about, or we were talking about earlier. You know, like that the, that that kind of crew, those guys, uh, that, that group of people we had together there was kind of. That's a different era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, uh, well, you know, laws, laws, laws have changed <laughs> yeah. for the betterment of the employee, I guess. And, yeah. uh, but it was, it was a rock solid, uh, I, you know, I don't know how it got done. Yeah. 
you know, we just the one thing we didn't worry about was the, fr the front house was pretty good always there. Yeah. I mean, you know, they kind of did whatever we needed to do, and we were always up for. Well, it was a very <laughs> kitchen centric restaurant, but uh, but yeah, the guys in the front house they they, they went along every game to do whatever. You know, but that's I think that's that comes with what the kind of the the chef driven restaurant model is today. You know. Yep. Yeah, it's got a, it starts in a kitchen and then translates to the dining room. You know, we need to we need to have these guys, uh, guys and gals in the front that really understand and appreciate food if they're going to really take care of what we do. Yeah, in the kitchen. Well, I, I think there's. Uh yeah, well, years ago you always, you always had the front versus back yeah. situation too, where it was always the, and I don't think you get that as much. Yeah. Now, I don't think you can succeed with the. Well, you know, you know as well as I do. But you, when you take that, when you make that step from becoming a chef to a restaurateur, you get you you also get a lot bigger understanding of the whole picture, not just yeah. the kitchen in front of the house. You know, it's it's got to be. Everybody's got to be in sync, or you, know, or you do sync. Right. You know? well, right now, yeah, yeah. it's pretty hard. That's true. Yeah you, yeah, you start realizing what what it's like to be dealing with a high maintenance table, and, and yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Well, I think probably what I what I taught Dave was patience more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an old story about the two bulls, the two, the two bulls on the top of the hill. You know, the young <laughs> run down exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good way to say it. Well, when I got to the river, yeah, you know, uh, Larry Forjohn was there when I was in college, and and Charlie right. was there. And Wally and Charlie worked together at like Basque, I believe, right? Yeah. So I, I spent a lot of time with, next to Wally Maloof on the line, I don't know, two or three years, which is which is hard to do these days with a, with a sure. great chef. You you know you're not, they're not online, so you to you, you know in a small country kitchen. Uh, so when I got to see Charlie, a lot of things crossed paths, whether it was tomato fondue or do the this. But Charlie was doing more American stuff than we were doing at La Crema here. Mm -hmm. uh, there was just a different, uh, a different feel um, for what was going on. And you know, I, I tried to think about Charlie. You know, he's, he can butcher, he can do pastry, and you can do, you know, you can do everything. Uh, humble. You know, Chad, you know, he wasn't screaming. I did all the yelling, I think. My, yeah, I, I like that. Like, yeah. I don't like yelling. I used to when I was younger. And, so uh, and it was a pretty intense time. And, and, and you know, I, I just moved to New York because when I worked in the, at the Plaza Athens, I was commuting from Jersey. So I moved into Brooklyn Heights. And we worked. And we yeah. just worked. And, you know, we, we made some mistakes here and there. But at least I did in, uh, in the crew. And we went out and yeah. came in early. And that's what we lived. We, so we, we lived worked to work. We played harder. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We lived, we worked, and we were competitive. I think within each other, we were always competitive. And when you were off on a Sunday, we were like, you know, we're going to do this, this, and this. And I think we had a pretty good working thing as far as chemistry went. Yeah. And, uh, no, we had a great time. I mean, I think one thing that, you know, people, I mean, we, you know, you and I and, and Jerry and that whole team of people know that outsiders don't know that, but there was so much, there were so many good ideas that incubated in that kitchen. You know, people talk about those, you know, uh, the French kitchens. People talk about, let's say, uh, we were always compared to, like, uh, Alfred Portali sure. and Gotham Bar and Grill. And, you know, they always said, well, that's, you know, those guys at the River Cafe, that's a rough and tough crowd. And, 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 and we're like the Westies. Bar we're like, we're like, kind of, yeah, like the Bowery Boys. You know? <laughs> you know? And I kind of like that. Yeah, we kind of like that idea. You know, so uh, I think that's something that people don't really... Uh, yeah, yeah, unless you were but there, there wasn't. You know. There wasn't. You had to be part of it. Yeah, yeah. there was um, uh, the finesse on the plate from from. You know, I'm yeah. sure. Listen, there was an Alfred put trained a lot of great guys that came out of Gotham for sure. And um, uh, yeah, but I did. We built smokers. Yeah. We were smoking bones for stock, flavoring oils, infusing this, you know. Well, think of all the stuff that we did that, you know, like, you, know, you look back and you're like, what the hell were we thinking? But, you know, like that, that smokehouse was a classic example. Yeah. That well, wasn't just a little smoker. That was just no, a that smokehouse was, that was underneath just, the Brooklyn And it's Bridge. still there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, I built one at Park Ave Cafe, and I started, yeah. I started selling pastrami salmon. And, but uh, the idea started at the River Cafe yeah. with Bellies because we had a smoker and you could do these things. Uh, yeah. And then the fire department comes in the park after Cafe <laughs> when I know it. A middle service, you know, it's like, it's like the Board of Health now with axes. And I'm like, oh, man. It's like my new car, you know. I don't buy, I mean, I don't even know about 
like learning stuff. But I think we all learn from each other. We always watch, you know, we watch what each other do, what we do, and you know, I'm sure Dave watches what I do, and sometimes says that's a good idea, or you know, what the hell was Charlie thinking that time? And say, you know, same thing. You always, you always look to. But you know, I think the biggest thing about it is like when you see people doing stuff and interesting ideas and interesting. You know, ventures and stuff like it. It's just, you know, they're doing it. So, I mean, I love when people do stuff. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, I, when you when you go out there on a limb. Yeah. And give because, a shot. Whether I mean, there's a lot of guys that talk about it, but there's not a lot of guys that go out and do it. You know. Mm -hmm. So. And you know what? It's, it's yeah. another job. It's yeah. just it's not, not just uh, you know you got to get up and do it. Well, you know if you if, if you expand and you expansion is you know there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of entrepreneurialism to it. There's a lot of hopefully there's money. Yeah. Um, but you know like when you when you do expand, you're also leaving something behind. Yeah. So and it's one of those sure. risky things. The more that you, uh, well, thank there you, you go. Mm -hmm. Conversations get, get better now. <laughs> yeah, <it's good>. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to lubricate, lubricate us. Is that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got to tell a story about the pizza. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> yeah, tell me a story about the pizza. You know, I see Joe King, another good guy from River Cafe the other day. So, expedite. I don't know if Charlie liked expedite, but maybe he did. But the River Cafe, we had a great little gadget, that little board was in the market. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you had two lines, so you had to like yell in the back. <clears throat> Yeah, we'd pick up like 24 dishes. It wasn't like you're yeah. picking up, you know, two tables. So they go, like, oh, give me six beef, meat, and rare, four chicken. <laughs> and they're like, we, hey, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> and then, you know, I'd miss something, right? Because you had to dot it. I don't know if that was your technique, but yeah, it was a good, yeah, good yeah. system. And Joe King, one of the runners, you know, we had a good, we had a good group of runners. <laughs> And he would like imitate the way I tied my apron, <laughs> the way I moved, <laughs> and the way I, you know, I was like, hey, hey, you missed one, you know? And I'd be like, you know, you're in the, in the groove, you know? It's like, I guess, it's like going up to a pitcher when he's got a full count saying, hey, he flies on the <laughs> I mean, Oh, you know, I made some beer. Mm -hmm. I made a Bloody Mary beer the other day. Oh, yeah? I make beer with Sam Adams once a year. I bring my kids up. <clears throat> and uh, we, my first beer was made with uh, beef hearts, grilled with rosemary. So it was kind of like a bloody. Oh, yeah? anyway, you know, not bad. Minerally, we, it was kind of, it had ginger snaps and blood. It was like, it was, a, it was my version of Oktoberfest. Did well. The second one we did was uh, barbecue peach. It was okay. It wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> but my sample, I got the sample. They make a sample base. Uh, it's, it's designed to be a tailgate beer, like Sunday Bloody Marys, okay. water bog. Pretty good because tomato water works good. I mean, it has an interesting flavor. And uh, we put in like some lemon and some horseradish powder. In there. Yeah, um, yeah uh, oregano is one of them. Celery seed. Yeah, anything in blood. Well, how's it going? When is it blended with the? They use powders the in the uh, right after uh, they do the work. Right after they boil. Okay. The first boil. Right. Then they start putting it in, and then they had, this is just a small. Probably made a case in a small batch. Then we'll go make 200 cases. They make 200 I, cases of it. Yeah. Two, I buy them all, and I sell them in my restaurants. Yeah, cool. and, uh, but we'll do it through the fourth. Yeah, pretty, pretty fun. They it's make a label for it, everything. Burke, Burke, Burke in a bottle. Burke in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and you think about when I first made a batch of uh, like steak sauce. You go down to these factories, yeah. and you're making 700 gallons. And you know, I'm like, you know, they don't yeah. really use butter when they make sauces and manufacture. No, no. I'm like, guys, eight, 18 cases of butter. <laughs> 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 cost goes. Okay, now it costs you know, four bucks to make it, but it tastes good. Yeah. Now it's sixteen dollars a bottle. <laughs> it's okay. more than a steak, but it's good. Yeah. How is the CIA? Are you, are you involved with the CIA? Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm. Um, I've been on the board of trustees of the school for. Uh, yeah, we got to get you on a board. I've been on the board for what eight years, and uh, actually, I'm going to become the uh, the president. I'm going to be the chairman of the board of trustees. Good. I would love to be on the board. In a few uh, few weeks, actually. That is, if I don't get arrested ahead of time or something. <laughs> but yeah, but no, the school's doing well. So I'm, this morning I'm doing something on CBS. I'm, uh, I'm rolling this goat cheese and put them on sticks. And, and I said that uh, we had like four minutes before we went live. And I'm like, you know, this guy's name is Seth. Seth, grab me two peaches. He's like, okay, no problem. I feel like we're in the, in the garden. Yeah. He goes down there. <laughs> And it's like, fine, like, how long does it take to go and walk in and grab a peach, right? I want to dice them up, roll them in, you know, peach season. And, uh, you know, it's coming, so I'm like, I'm yelling, like, what else? What else? And the host is like, 
five, four, you know, like, hey, hey, you know. <laughs> and uh, so we started making this stuff. And, like, 12 minutes later, two pizzas come up. I'm like, I said, peaches, man. Two big pizzas, eight in the morning. I'm like, pizzas. <laughs> I, you know, so I gotta, I gotta start relaxing when I speak, man. You're like, dropping the. Uh, it was breakfast pizza. Yeah, it was. <laughs> with peaches on it. Yeah, pizza. <laughs> And I was just like, okay, so that, and I, remember, I had pizza for breakfast today, so. Well, yeah, we used to get that a lot in the French kitchens. I remember when I worked at the Cote Basque, you know, Rush U would be expediting. Nobody could understand what he was doing. Everybody would be going, we chef, we chef. And then he had, you know, then he had this thing like, make a shoe. I was like, what are you talking about with the shoe? <laughs> Finally, he's trying to say stew. <laughs> stew. Could have called it ragu. Everybody yeah, would understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, keep it French, you know?